and welcome to your video tutorial here in week three where we're going to be looking at milestone one. This is of course your your first big step in the final paper project and milestone one is basically writing the introduction to your final paper. So the ideas that you're going to start building on this week with milestone one are going to be the same ones you continue working with in the weeks ahead and building on for the final paper. So what I wanted to do is sort of walk you through the the practical steps of how to choose your works of art for Milestone 1 and the thematic connection that's going to tie them together and then remind you of the actual elements that need to be included in your Milestone 1 introduction submit by this week. Remember that your Milestone 1 is due by the end of Module 3. So the first step in Milestone 1 is choosing your works of art and that thematic connection. So for those of you in 201, you're going to be choosing two works of art, one that is visual and one that is literary, and then a thematic connection that ties them together. Those of you in 202, you'll be choosing two visual works of art and them together with the thematic connection. So the first thing you want to do is go into Module 3 in MindEdge. So here's a, a shot from those of you in 202. This is what your Module 3 looks like. And when you uh, click down in the menu, you'll see um, it can take you directly to Milestone 1. When you click on that there, it pulls up all the information you're going to need to get started with Milestone 1. So for those of you in 201, this is what that looks like once you get to that section in MindEdge for this week. So once you're in this section of MindEdge here in Module 3 and looking at the instructions to get started with Milestone 1, you want to look at these materials that are there for you. The grading rubric is there to show you how this assignment is going to be graded, what's involved with it, um, the basic elements as far as length and um, format and so forth. Then you're going to see this second sort of highlighted section here, and that's the comparison suggestion list. This is the document that you're going to choose from. You're going to choose your works of art and your theme from this list. So even though it's called a suggestion list, it's, it's more than a suggestion. You, you have to choose your works of art from this list. So as you, um, I'll take a look at those lists in more detail here in a second. You can also look ahead at your final paper guidelines. Um, you can see that, that third hyperlink in there for downloading it here. This is just to give you an idea of sort of what you're working towards. Like I said before, Milestone 1 is this first step in the process of writing your final paper. So it can be really helpful to look ahead at what that final product is going to be. So as you even begin Milestone 1, you sort of know where you're starting and where you're headed. So that those comparison suggestion lists, you're going to click on that. It's going to bring up um, two uh, PDF documents that are going to have these sections within it. So the one for 201 looks like this. This is just the first page of it. It goes on beyond this as well. For 202, it looks like this. So each one, each sort of section here, one, two, and then that's under Ancient Near East for those of you in 201, one and two under Ancient Egypt and so forth, you're going to see the theme listed first. So for example, the theme of um, legitimization of authority in the Ancient Near East or the theme of the quest for immortality for those of you in 201. In 202, you're going to see that theme listed, the second thing in the, in the list. So the first one is the theme of dramatic expression, and this is choosing from a work in the Italian Baroque or the Abstract Expressionist period. The second idea down below, the theme of uh, the portrayal of a family meal, and the examples here are going to be from the Dutch Baroque and the Impressionist period. So those are some of the themes you can scan through the list, any themes that jot at you. Like I've mentioned before, it's always a theme or thematic connection that you're interested in. So if the idea of of um, the le legitimization already interests you, then that's something you might zoom in on. If not, kind of keep scrolling down and find a, a theme that most appeals to you, because again, you're going to be working with this concept for the next few weeks, and you want to find something that appeals to you. So maybe once you've narrowed down a particular theme, you want to look at the works of art that are listed beneath them. So for example, in 201, that legitimization of authority theme, we've got this the law code of the Hammurabi, and then um, the code of the Hammurabi, written text. So those are your two works of art, the visual piece and then the um, literary piece, the written text. For example, over in the, 
the 202 section if you choose that dramatic expression theme. Your first work of art is Caravaggio's Entombment of Christ, and your second work is Jackson Pollock's Autumn Rhythm Painting from the Expressionist period. So that can help to help you decide too which of these you want to do. So you're going to choose something from this list, um, one of these sort of subsections in the list to work with. And then one other thing on the list you'll notice here, underneath each of those choices, it says, for a contemporary connection, try dot, dot, dot. Um, this is the, another key element of, of your paper that you're going to be looking at, and we'll talk more and more about in the weeks ahead. But basically, your paper is a good comparison and contrast of these two main works of art, but you're also going to be sort of bringing it all into the present and thinking about how this theme is still relevant today. So step two is actually writing your introduction for milestone one. So some things to keep in mind for this is to think of the what and the why. The what meaning a good introduction, a clear, full identification of your two works of art. So the author, the artist, the title, the date, all that information, again, look at your rubric and guidelines to see what kinds of details need to be included in there. And you want to include images, good quality photos, multiple viewpoints when available. Um, so your reader gets a good, clear sense of what this paper is going to be looking at from, from the very first paragraph after your intro. The why. This is where you're going to talk about that shared theme and contemporary connection. So you're not just saying this paper is going to be, out, be about painting one and painting two but it's going to introduce those two paintings and say why you're connecting them together. What is it that they have in common? What's that shared theme? Why do these two works of art specifically work for this paper in terms of a comparison? What's that shared theme? And you're also going to sort of reflect on how we see that theme still relevant today in the world around us in contemporary culture. So you're giving your reader just a little bit of a hint of what that contemporary connection is going to be that you're going to come up with later in your paper. So that by the time we get through this introductory paragraph in, in your paper, um, what you're writing for Milestone 1, basically, your reader knows exactly what your two main works of art are, why you've chosen those two, what their thematic connection is, and then how you're going to look at that thematic connection in terms of what's happened today, how you're going to kind of bring it all up into the present day later on in your paper. Some other reminders as you're writing your introduction. You want to have it be 100 to 150 words, full sentences, paragraphs, so it's not just bullet points or an outline. Again, this is, is meant to be the introductory paragraph to your final paper, so you want to write it as a full paragraph. You want to follow MLA format, so whether you've got citations in here yet, um, even if you don't, you want to think about it in terms of overall format, so spacing and margins and font and so forth. And then one last reminder, when you get into Module 3 in MindEdge, as you get closer to the end of the module, you'll see that there are some um, steps and then actually an example that help walk you through how to do Milestone 1. So there's an example in there of Milestone 1 for those of you in 201, as well as those of you in 202, so you can see sort of what it looks like. It's not a perfect example, of course, but it is a good um, way to get started and think about what it might look like overall. And then it's also sort of got a worksheet way of walking you through the steps in, in terms of how to build your Milestone 1 project. So make sure you check that out too in, in Module 3 this week to help you um, move along in writing your actual Milestone 1 assignment.